What I have here is a chunk of hickory tree that a friend of mine and I cut down with an axe seven years ago. This piece is extremely dry and hard to work with, but I have several cleaned up pieces already that have four smooth sides on it and are ready to be turned into axe handles. The project we'll be working on is a handle for this genuine plum Boy Scouts of America hatchet head. This will be a two-part series, first of which being the making of the hatchet handle itself, followed by handling of the hatchet head. So what we've done so far is given this four smooth sides. I have the grains running parallel with the axe. That's going to make for a much stronger handle, a lot more resilient to striking. What you see already is the center marked out. This is about an inch and a quarter width here. I've got the eye of the axe head traced out there where I want it to sit. And from there, I've leveled down and made these marks and then drew my axe handle's first profile. When tracing out the eye of this hatchet head, be sure that you have the hatchet head turned upside down on the material. The top of the eye is larger than the bottom. Other marks that you'll see on this handle drawing, I have a line here. That's where the axe head is gonna, I'm gonna try to get the axe head to stop right there. That's where I imagine it's gonna sit. I've got a mark here for the high point of the shoulder. Little line here, that's gonna be a relief cut. Here as well, another relief cut. And that way, after I make this cut, the wood will break off right there. What happens is that when I'm chopping, the way the wood grain runs, I can actually split off part of my handle. So I want to have those relief cuts in place so it's not as likely to happen, but it can still happen. You can see where that relief cut terminates the shavings. This prevents me from gouging into the curved part of the handle. This is not completely a fail-safe strategy. If I come through a shaving with too much force, I'll hit that shelf and still ruin the handle. All right, now that we have the side profile bulk of the material removed off of it, you can see there's still a little bit left. I tried to stay off the lines a little bit. It's really easy to accidentally take too much material. So if you can stay a little bit off the lines and find a, a better tool to go on from here, that would be best. So what I'm gonna do before I start drawing this profile, I'm gonna take it over to my sawhorse I made this on a bachelor trip. We cut down the tree with an ax and split it, split the log with wedges and did this all with chisel and a bracing bit. I've also got another one hiding back there in the corner that I'll probably jump on and use as well. All right, let's get some sides smoothed out a little bit. This style of shave horse is called a dumb head. The log piece you see at the top is connected to a long arm that goes down to a foot pedal. As I push against the pedal, it'll bring the log head towards me, which will clamp the blank I'm working on tightly into the shave horse. Instinctively, the harder I pull with the draw knife, the harder my foot pushes against the pedal, thus locking it in even tighter. A helpful tip when using this draw knife rather than just pulling straight towards yourself. If you can skew the blade just a little bit and then drag towards yourself, you're gonna be using the most of the portion of the blade rather than just wearing out the center or one edge, you'll get a lot longer life out of the blade just by pulling at this angle and you'll notice that it cuts with a lot less effort.
I've reached sort of the limit of what I can do with the shave horse so I've locked it into a pipe clamp here and I'm gonna put this in the vise and continue shaving with the draw knife. Keep in mind at this point we are not rounding the edges of this blank. We are simply carving the material down to the lines we've made. When carving into these low dips in the wood, you'll need to approach it from both sides to avoid tear out. Holding the draw knife at a 90 degree angle will allow me to scrape much finer shavings. This would be similar to the function of a card scraper. All right, that pretty well wraps it up for the side profile. There's a little bit of material left here. We're gonna leave that. And then this angle that I'm gonna cut on the base of the hat ax handle. We're gonna leave that for now, or this Fawn's foot. We're gonna leave that on there. That'll come in handy when I smack the handle into the ax head. If you take that off early, you'll risk damaging the fawn's foot of your hatchet handle. Ask me how I know. Time for the top side profile. Here I'm establishing a center line with a flexible ruler. This will help me keep everything proportional. I'm going to go ahead and check the thickness of a handle that I already have made. That has a nice comfortable grip. I like that thickness, so I'm going to try to match that. To prevent the mistake of making your handle too thin, make these measurements a skosh wider. Here I'm sketching out the flare at the bottom for the fawn's foot. It looks like such a small detail when you're drawing it, but once you carve it out, you'll be surprised at how much that adds to both the look and function of the hatchet handle. Alright, that's about as good as I can do right now with the shave horse. We are fairly close at the top of the handle where the axe head is going to sit. However, down here by the butt of the handle, there's still some material left to be removed. The material that is left is right where the shave horse head has been clamping, just preventing me from getting my knife any closer. You can't simply turn the piece around and start pulling in the other direction. That most likely will result in cutting off this flare at the base of the handle that I'm going to be using for extra grip. So that means it's back to the pipe clamp.
great example of tear out. If I would have kept pulling this knife, this splinter would have cracked deep into our handle. Best thing to do now would be to come in from the other side. So, it is a little unusual that this wood grain would split out, especially when you're cutting downhill. It happens a lot when you're trying to cut up a slope, but normally when you're coming down a slope, the cuts seem to work just fine. All right, we have our two profiles cut out. Now before I go rounding off all of these edges, I'm going to focus primarily up here where the axe head will be sitting. Personal preference. If you happen to shave off too much, just put it back on. By the time I'm finished with this handle, I will have tons of these wood shavings left over. They are great for throwing in your grill and smoking meat with. It is hickory after all. All right, we have carved out the top portion of our hatchet handle close to our lines. Time for the first test fit. It's not gonna fit. This you're gonna have to do several times. You'll probably have to put this head on, take this head off close to 30 times. It's this portion of the project that will take the most patience you want that head to be seated tight all the way around the base, so don't rush it. Our hatchet head is sitting at about a quarter inch on right now. At this phase, I'm just gently tapping the ax head down on the sawhorse driving the handle in gently. I'm also checking for any gaps that there may be at the base of the hatchet head. If I look through the top, I can see a little bit of light shining through around the eye of the hatchet. To get rid of those open pockets, I'm actually gonna mark the areas where the hatchet head is making contact and begin removing that material to get rid of the voids. My hatchet head is fitting down to this point that's about a half inch on and I am making contact most of the way around on this handle. These shaded areas are the areas I'm still going to remove material. The non-shaded areas are where I'm not making contact. Now that we have the hatchet head beginning to fit on, we're going to come back and soften these edges till we get a nice comfortable grip.
made by Nicholson. It's called a four in hand. It has a round and a flat side. You can see the round side there. It's just slightly rounded while the other side is flat. This is great for some of the final shaping work. hatchet handle. Stay tuned for part two where I'll go over properly fitting the hatchet head and cutting off this extra that we left here at the bottom of the palm swell. If you like this video and would like to see more, please like and subscribe. It's this portion of the project that will take It's this portion of the project that will take the most